close your eyes and make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath. And then once you've made up your mind, try to keep it there. Try to see what kind of breathing feels best right now. Because the breath is like medicine. It has an effect on all the different organs in the body. And if the energy flowing through the body is a good energy, then it's bound to keep the, the different organs of the body in a healthier situation, healthier condition than they would be otherwise. So it's free medicine. The question is how we're going to take advantage of it. All too often we have what we think are a lot more important things to do. And as a result, some very important parts of the mind, but are things that are really important, get neglected. For instance, your ability to make up your mind to stay with one thing and actually stay with it. You often find that when you make up your mind to stay with the breath, you can stay for a couple breaths and then you're off someplace else. And then the question is, well, what happened? And you were kidnapped. Well, what kidnapped you? Well, it wasn't anybody outside. It was something else going on in the mind. So you come back to the breath again, and you try to get stronger the next time, so that no matter what comes up in the mind, no matter what sound comes from outside, or whether intention, there's an intention inside, you're not going to go with it. And you stay with the breath for a couple of times, and then you're gone again. But each time you come back, you remind yourself, okay, I want to stay here and be on the lookout to see what it is that makes my mind so out of control. And then after all, you get better and better at seeing when the distractions are coming up and how to say no to them. This way you get more control over your mind. And this is a really vital skill, because without this skill, our minds can create, create all kinds of trouble, start thinking about things that are bad for us, that don't help us in any way, and actually drag the mind down. And here you can pull yourself out. You gain the skill for pulling yourself out of those things. So try to work with this skill, because the well-being of the mind depends on it. We tend to think that our well-being depends on having the outside the way we want it. The, pe the people we love, we want them to be a certain way. The people we don't like, we want them to be away from us. We want the economy to be running in a certain way. All kinds of ideas about what would be just right. But you can live in a situation like that, and still the mind can make itself miserable. So this is something you want to look into, to see how you can get some more control over your mind. And we do this by focusing on the breath. Because while you're working with the breath and getting the breath to be comfortable throughout the body, it's not just the mind that benefits, the body benefits as well. And when the mind is in good shape and the body is in good shape here in the present moment, it's a lot easier for the mind to stay here. And you've got things more under your control particularly the things that you really can control, i.e. The, the state of your mind. So focus on that as your most important, most important duty, your most important resource that you've got inside. Because if the mind is in good shape, you can put up with all kinds of stuff outside, and it doesn't have to suffer. If the mind is not in good shape, you can live in the best sort of situation, and still the mind would be discontent. So look into this quality of the mind, the quality of not being under your control, and what can you, can you do about it? You try to develop mindfulness, i.e. the ability to keep something in mind, and alertness to see what's actually going on. These two qualities working together help bring a lot more control to the mind. When the mind is more under control, then your happiness is more under control as well. And that's a really vital skill. <coughs> 